We're looking at a hypergeometric situation. You've got 30 students, 18 have a driver's license, and you're selecting 10 at random. We want to know the probability that at least four have their driver's license. Now this at least, this is a key indicator of a potential indirect method use. Remember the indirect method is taking one minus the probability of not at least four. Reason being, at least four in this situation, we could start at four, we could go five, six, all the way up to 30. That's gonna take us a long time. Some of you will do this on the test. You'll waste a lot of time. Um, it's not recommended. The indirect method is definitely useful here. For us, we wanna look at the probability that we have at least four. So that's four or greater. So we're gonna use the indirect method and that's gonna tell us to take one and we're gonna subtract the probability of getting zero students with their license, one, two, three. And this will be not getting at least four. That'll be zero, one, two, and three. And we're gonna take that away from one. And that should give us the probability of getting at least four. Much quicker, much more efficient. So we do have to fill in our formula here. We're gonna start with our one and we're gonna subtract the probability of getting zero students that have their driver's license. So remember, we're counting successes. A student having their driver's license is a success and that's what A represents. Remember our total number of successes possible. So we're gonna start with 18. We're gonna choose zero because we want none of our students to have driver's licenses. But remember, then we also have to multiply by the other case, which is there are 12 remaining students and all of them will have their licenses. So remember, we're selecting 10. So we're gonna have 12, choose 10, that'll be every student has their license. We're gonna divide by our total number of outcomes, which is 30 students, and we're choosing 10 of them. Okay, we're gonna subtract the probability of one, which you can extrapolate based on what we just did here. We're gonna choose one student to have their license, which means we're gonna have one less student that does have their license. And we can continue in a similar manner. Take a minute, pause the video if you have to, process that. And remember with probability, we like to write it as a decimal or a percentage. Now, if we wanna know the expected number of students with their driver's licenses, we can use this formula. We could also add up all of our X times PXs. That's gonna take us a long time. So I'd suggest using this formula. I remember R is the number of trials, A is successful outcomes, N is the size. Size in this case, you know, there's 30 students in total. We're looking at 10 trials. We're selecting 10 students at random. Our A value is our successful outcomes. So that's 18. We've got 18 students with a driver's license. So that leaves an expected value of six. So you can expect six people to have their driver's license.